Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. As the curator of a historic vessel, my job is not just what traditional landside curators do, taking care of the museum's collections, the artifacts, documents, library, exhibits, but our entire ship, the 90-story the office building that we use that happens to be laying on its side in the water, the historic house for 2,000 people, uh, the Battleship New Jersey is one of the artifacts in the collection. So proper maintenance of that is one of the things that falls under the purview of a museum ship curator. Uh, so today, uh, as you can see, is uh, a maintenance day for us, and it's been a while since we've updated you on the various maintenance projects that we're doing. So uh, we're going to talk about a new space that the volunteers opened, uh, we're going to talk about some uh, work that we've done preparatory to going into dry dock, and we're going to talk about the teak deck project. So, uh, as of filming this, what's it, January 24th, 2023, uh, the museum is only open on weekends. So winter, we get very low visitation, so that means it's a great time to do maintenance work. The problem is, it's too cold for us to put down glue or paint outside the ship. The ship does have climate control, has both heat and air condition, and uh, we can usually keep the inhabited parts of the ship at around 70 degrees year round. Uh, so that is something that predates me, but the staff did a really great job of installing heating and air conditioning here. Um, out of all the museum ships I've visited and worked on, this one probably has the best climate control of any of them. However, Exterior here where we're redecking, the heating and the air conditioning doesn't do any good. So if you come and visit us this January, February, or probably into the spring, you're going to see that we've got a lot of uh, the ship shrink wrapped off or tarped over like where I am right now at the folks of the ship. And you might see one of the former 40 millimeter gun tubs over here on the starboard side. Uh, so that gives you an idea. We, we are forward of the breakwater and that is going towards the bow of the ship behind me. At the extreme end, you might be able to see the, the black drum of the capstan. So it give, gives you an idea of where we are, and, and we've closed in basically everything from the breakwater all the way to the capstans on the starboard side of the ship. Uh, if you do come and visit, it's going to be kind of an eyesore because of the construction. Uh, there's almost as much construction going on on the battleship as there is on New Jersey highways. Uh, but you can still come up the port side there, there's a large enough space to be a walkway on that side to go up and continue to see the bow of the ship. We've got enough work crews uh, right now going on the deck that they can be working here on the bow and amidships on the starboard side simultaneously. So you see here that how the uh, starboard side is covered in, in shrink wrap and they've got uh, heat running in there as well and they're, they're laying our system of teak. The great news is we have officially uh, crossed the halfway point in this project. An Iowa-class battleship has approximately 43,000 square feet of teak deck. We have just crossed the 22,000 square foot mark, and uh, we only have approximately 13,000 square feet left to rip up. So you can see we haven't laid this stuff, but we've ripped it all up. So we are very, very close to, um, not very close per se, but we're three quarters of the way through ripping stuff up and we're halfway through laying new stuff down. If you're interested in the process we're using for redecking the ship, we've absolutely done that to death. There's links to several different videos in the description below. I just wanted to update you on the progress of this project and uh, we've been getting a lot of visitor comments about why does the ship look like that? It's because we're doing work. You guys aren't coming out to visit, we're doing work. If you want to support this project uh, and help us continue it, we uh, estimate that this is a five-year, $5 million project. We're probably three years, $3 million through it, rough estimate. Um, if you want to support this project, there's a link in the description below to donate specifically to the deck project, or there's a link in the description below to buy pieces of the teak that we have cut up or studs from the deck that was holding the teak down. And... Uh, any proceeds we make from selling that also goes back into the deck project. 
So another thing that we do this time of year is uh, our inspections of the various tanks. Iowa-class battleships have as many as 600 tanks that are uninhabitable. These are void spaces, or they were former fuel tanks, or boiler feed water, or even seawater ballast tanks. Uh, so each one of them has a sounding tube in the deck. We put a, we've done a video on this, so check the link in the description. But uh, we, we sound these tanks at least once a year to see what's in them. However, sometimes we can't find the tank. Uh, sometimes it is painted shut or rusted shut and we can't open it. So the next step of the process is to go through our list of tanks that we haven't been in or we don't know the condition of and inspect them, uh, which means opening up the shell plating here. And on Iowa-class battleships, we're very fortunate in that you go out here and you're still inside the ship. If we were on a South Dakota-class battleship, this would be a cutout in the side of the ship. There would be no access there from inside. We'd have to go out and uh, stand on top of the tank to get down where we need to go out there. So we can go inspect these tanks and see what condition they're in. This Climbing into these void spaces can be dangerous, so we always have uh, our staff EMT on hand, our maintenance department, and uh, somebody who's trained to go down there. We, of course, have uh, our foregas monitor to make sure that there's breathable air in the tanks. They're almost always open like this to ventilate, so the air down in the tank is the exact same as the air out here. We're pretty consistently getting 21% O2, uh, which is what we want to see. The monitor, I think, goes off at 18% O2. <laughs> yeah, so uh, where ladders are involved, we have uh, a lot of lights that we put in there. We have uh, harnesses that we rig up. Uh, remember, if you have your own Iowa-class battleship at home, make sure you're following all the proper safety procedures before you go in there. Uh, the, the biggest, the biggest, the biggest thing is we always follow the two-man rule so that if somebody falls and hurts themselves or has an unrelated medical incident but they're inside something confined like this, uh, somebody else can get help. Also helps us plan the scope of work for dry dock. Um, speaking of dry docking, we still do not have an expected date for that. Um, we... It's at least, at least, at least two years out. If we don't have a date yet, it's at least two years before we can book a, a slot in the yard. But seeing the insides of these tanks helps us plan a scope of work. And we have recently had a team of divers from Schofield Marine come out and inspect as much of the underwater hull as they possibly could, which also helps us refine the scope of work for dry docking. And I don't have the full written report yet, um, when I do get something, we'll, we'll post another update video and let you know how that looks and what we're looking to do. Uh, but things are looking good so far. From, from early conversations, the coatings on the underside of the ship are uh, fairly intact underwater, which we would hope to see in fresh water where we've got a functioning impressed current cathodic protection system. Um, they also inspected our 100-year storm mooring system, the, the chains that are sunk into the seabed, and uh, inspected the channel that goes from the ship out to the main channel so that we can actually tow her out of here, make sure that hasn't silted in. So all of this is uh, stuff that we're going to get answers on that we've wondered for like 20 years uh, what the condition is. And so we'll know what we're doing before we have to go out. So the vinyl part of our update is a new addition to the tour route. We are on the starboard side of the ship, just before you get to the uh, chow handling lines for enlisted mess. And this space is the ship's bakery. The ship's bakery has been open for a while, uh, but we recently had an Eagle Scout come through and completely uh, chip and paint and beautify the space so it looks good again. Uh, he also got for us some fake food to put out including my favorite piece, this uh, fake cake here that looks very similar to one that Admiral Halsey had while he was on board. That's where the inspiration for this particular cake came from. Uh, I'm, of course, very, very jealous that Mizora has a donut shop, uh, so I insisted that we got donuts to put out here because just because we have a butcher shop instead of a donut shop doesn't mean that our battleship doesn't have donuts too. 
Uh, if you're confused about what I'm talking about, there's a link in the description below to the video we got to uh, do in Missouri's Donut Shop. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that leads me to uh, know pretty conclusively that we had donuts on board is we've got the uh, deep fat fryers here for frying the donuts in. So just because we don't have a specific shop doesn't mean that we're not a cool Iowa class battleship too. Missouri was only ever used as a desk anyway. Uh, another thing that you'll notice when you come and visit this space, uh, our volunteers got a, uh, a, a, a smell diffuser for in here. So this is our first attempt at making a, um, intentionally making a multi-sensory experience here on the battleship. Now, obviously we have ship smell here, but um, now we're starting to experiment with putting some of those other smells back in the places where they should be. So it smells like baked goods here in the bakery and uh, maybe I'll start putting bacon grease out in the uh, regular enlisted mess. We're not gonna do any sort of smellscape in the butcher shop, don't worry about that. Uh, but just something new that we uh, are, are trying out here to make your experience to the ship more immersive. In addition to restoring this space that's been open for a while, right next door to it, you know, you make all your bread in there, but it's not a particularly large room. Uh, this is the bread cooling room. So you've just baked all your bread. Now it comes out here on racks and this is everything that you're going to make for the day. So these guys would get in here before dawn in the morning and make all the bread for the day. That's then being served at the four meals over the course of the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and mid rats or midnight rations. Uh, probably my favorite piece in here that we have been able to uh, now open to the public that the space has been restored is the uh, bread slicer here. Did you know that during World War II, uh, the United States did not manufacture bread slicers at all and civilians couldn't get new bread slicers because the complex metal parts in here were uh, better used in the war effort we're short on metal, we're doing scrap metal drives, so why are we going to make a complex metal thing like this when we can retool that shop to make airplanes and we can use this metal for other stuff? So during World War II, couldn't buy sliced bread. You had to buy loaves and cut it yourself with your knife at home. What are some projects you'd like to see us do in the future? Let us know in the comment section down below. New spaces you want to see open, new uh, preservation projects you want to see us do, uh, things like dry docking, I want to see that too. Um, it's long overdue, uh, but let us know your thoughts down below. Of course, this work wouldn't be possible without our volunteers. Uh, as someone interested in museum ships and naval history, have you volunteered on your local museum ship yet? Be sure to go and check out hinsa.org for a list of museum warships. Uh, there may be one closer to you than you think that you can volunteer at. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support us. How about supporting our deck project? You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and the museum. Thanks for watching.